and welcome to another great edition of Gale Forcements. Here we are at the Energy NL trade show. What an event it is. We are sponsored by Everwind Fuels and thanks to them for bringing this conversation to the trade show floor. I'm Alan Dale. With me as always, my good buddy, Jerry Carew. Andrew, I've heard a lot about you over the years from a mutual friend. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself? Jeez, where do I start? Um, I guess 1969, no. Uh, you know, I, my name is Andrew Bell and I, I've been in family business. I was lucky enough, I guess I got a leg up many years ago and, and joined the family business. And from there, I've sort of branched out and done a bunch of things on my own. Um, we exist in many different industries and many different businesses, and more than anything, we're having a lot of fun. Is that right? You know, we're starting stuff in the radio business, beer business, and, and the uh, obviously oil and gas, and then now the energy business and renewables, and, and it's been a great journey. It's been a lot of fun. It's, it's you know, doing it with other people and working with people and, and uh, sharing the fun and that. It's, it's been great. It's been exciting, and I'm looking forward for the years to come. Andrew, uh, it's, uh, it's clear to me that you are having fun. You can see it in your eyes whenever you, whenever you get into a conversation. Tell us about doing business here in Newfoundland and Labrador. How's that? Newfoundland and Labrador is a great place to do business. You know, it can be challenging. I mean, it's a small market. There's half a million people, but we're rich in resources. Uh, I think many years ago, you know, we were all, as, well, as a child and growing up, we were very dependent on the fishery, and that was all we heard about, and we lived and died by it. Today, I think the reality is there's so many exciting things going on in the mining sector, in the oil and gas sector, in the renewable sector, hydrogen. Uh, tech sector, you know, you look at Verifin and some great success stories, milk movement, uh, milk movement, all of these things. So I, I think it's a great place to do business. Um, you know, the weather's a little challenging, but that's why we got cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you talk about all of those industries thriving at the moment. Mm. Seems like there's opportunity everywhere. Tell me what opportunity. What are the what are the big opportunities that you see that are most exciting right now? Uh, you know, I think they're, they're right now. First of all, uh, the renewables, the hydrogen, and the wind sector segment is great. Last year in April, um, the, the provincial government opened up the wind segment and, and stopped the ban on, on wind turbines and stuff. So I think that's created a huge opportunity. Um, if anybody knows about wind, it's the island of Newfoundland. Being out here in the middle of the North Atlantic, I think people forget sometimes really where we are geographically. But it is the epitome of wind and wind power. So I, I think that's a huge one right now. I think that uh, especially with the vast um, uh, tracts of empty land, crown lands that we can take advantage of to put these on that won't interfere in municipalities and stuff, I think that it'll be great. Um, I think that oil and gas still has a tremendous amount of opportunity. You know, I'd really like to see the feds and the province come together um, as, as, an, as, a, as a country, Canada is buying still plus 50% of its oil and gas from foreign markets, um, focused on reducing the carbon footprint. I mean, realistically, that's a global initiative. I don't know who we're fooling if we think that, you know, we're reducing it in Canada and not reducing it elsewhere. I think we should develop our own resources first and foremost. And offshore Newfoundland has light, sweet, crude. You know, helping Nova Scotia, New Brunswick to get off the coal-fired plants and stuff that they have makes a tremendous amount of sense in doing things along those lines from that standpoint. So I, it's an exciting time, I think, for us as a province. We just got to make sure that we don't lose that potential. We take advantage of that, um, you know, so that we don't lose it in time. Yeah. I tell you, we've heard nothing but opportunity here over the day. Everybody's talking about it. Incredible growth. In Newfoundland and Labrador, and I would argue certainly in Atlantic Canada, there's a tendency for government and industry and academia to all work together collectively. And they, we understand, I think, in this part of the world that a rising tide floats all boats. You Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I think nothing is more, um, I guess, reality or more, nothing is more uh, true in that statement when it comes to a small market because everybody needs everybody else to thrive and grow. I mean, when you get a market like the size of Toronto or the U.S., you really, there's so many pockets one can operate and exist on their own almost. Um, in Newfoundland, we require everyone or rely on everyone else to help us and do what it is we do so that we get the engine going. It really has to be a team approach with much industry, much academia, much government. And I think the sooner we get everybody together and, and rowing that boat in the same direction, um, very fitting comment, a rising tide will rise on this. But on that note, you know, Andrew, your family have believed in this province for, for a long time. Give us a little uh, thumbnail sketch as to what it is you're involved in, if you can. You know, I know that you're involved in a lot. You believe in this province, and you do it by investing money here. Just talk a little bit about the Abel Group. We, uh, we, you know, look, I, I'll talk a bit about uh, Charles Abel, because he was my grandfather, and, and ultimately my father has carries the same name. 
Um, they were the ones that set, you know, the standard or, or set this all in motion. My grandfather in 1934, and then my father continuing to carry that torch and investing in Newfoundland, acquiring Newfoundland companies in different industries. And for years, I wondered what what it was that we did, yeah. and you know, what focus or what what our discipline was. And the answer was our discipline was Newfoundland, and and we were in all kinds. We were in retail, we were in wholesale, we were you know looking at all kinds of different businesses. Um, but the common denominator was the province of Newfoundland. That's changed somewhat over the years. We've now expanded beyond the borders of Newfoundland and, and a couple of the businesses we have. Obviously, we've got a brewery in Nova Scotia um, called the Burnside Brewing Company, recently changed its name. Um, well, we got this beer right here. I love this beer here. Uh, we, we have a radio station, obviously, here at St. John's Coast 101.1. And we've created a national uh, fire suppression or, or a life safe, fire life safety company called Everguard, which exists from BC right through to, to St. John's. So it's it's been exciting. I, I had a friend of mine, and we've done most of this through COVID, which has been fascinating, um, who said to me, you know, most people went home and learned how to cook or play guitar, and you got on a plane and, and did something different. And we did. And, and it wasn't just me. It was the team that I have around me. They're wonderful people. Um, we're all driven by the same thing, and, and that's, you know, obviously the success. And, and goal oriented and, and also as i said earlier having fun at the same time and, it, and it's been a lot of fun through COVID. we made COVID fun um we didn't stay at home and sit within the four yeah. walls of our own house and not see people we actually got out there and did something about it and, and it's been great i joked for a while that i had my own private 787 air canada jet you know it was a nice life for a while because i was the only one on it but it, it uh it's been great. It, it really has. We've come out of COVID in a much stronger position, and now we're starting to see that slingshot effect. Uh, we're starting to see people who were holding back or had put projects on the shelf now bringing them out and doing it. So there's this abundance of opportunity that exists right across the country. And we're trying to take advantage of that where we can and finding opportunities, particularly to take your conversation back where, where you guys started it, and that is here in Newfoundland and Labrador with the hydrogen and the wind industry. and seeing what we can do to get that going. This is world class. There is no projects like they're proposing here in Newfoundland that currently exist globally. Um, and I think that's really important for anyone, certainly not of the magnitude. I mean, we're talking three gigawatts, two of the projects are talking. I think the biggest one now is 250 um, kilowatts. So it's, it's really getting to a, a, a size that is, um, doesn't exist today and is something that was you know, a pipe dream 10 years ago. But with advancements in technology and things, we're really getting to a place where they're starting to be realistic and, and, and trying to fast track them. Well, on that note, when I was in that room there, the numbers were absolutely staggering. The investment numbers coming into this province just for renewable energy, Alan, is out. I, I can't even fathom it. No. I mean, you're talking, I think Hibernia at the time was um, six billion, and yeah. I think that uh, the FPSOs were two and three billion, and, and Hebron came in, I think, somewhere slightly above 10. We're talking overall here of one project being 12, another one worth nine billion. You add them all up, you're in excess of $50 billion. You know, the biggest challenge for us if these things go, and I think we're going to see some um, some results very shortly, the end of June or early July on, on, I think, the 19 proponents, so we'll know who the government has approved to go for it. Um, we're going to see pretty quickly what we're talking about and, and, and where it's going to go. And I think everybody, you know, wants to get this done. There's a serious need for hydrogen or for energy abroad, particularly in Europe, and we're set up geographically well for that. And, and you know, green hydrogen's a wonderful thing. It, it's truly renewable and clean footprint and yeah. goes back to offset some of the carbon footprint that we have in other fronts. Yeah. It's pretty amazing when you think about, uh, the, as you say, the magnitude of these projects which directly equates into the magnitude of opportunity. And these are not, you know, one of jobs, and these are not just high paying jobs. These are the type of jobs that you raise families off. Generations of Newfoundlanders can now return back home and start laying roots again and, and, and work on these incredible projects. That's got to feel good as a family who's stayed true to Newfoundland for such a long time. Alan, the word is transformational, yeah. and it is huge, and it will be. If you take the project like World Energy GH2 and what they're doing on the West Coast, um, Stephenville currently no commercial flights. That will change the dynamic for those people. They will no longer have to travel two hours to get a commercial flight. There will right. be regular flights into Stephenville. There will be retailers. There will be support services. There will be things that come to that market that are only available in you know St. John's or, or Clarenville or 
whatever you know, the city centers are. Um, I, I think that's the biggest thing. And this is wonderful, set it up for the next generation. Yeah. We've been talking in Newfoundland for a while about you know all the cost and expense and the debt, and we're going to pass that on to the next generation. We have an opportunity, and I believe a responsibility as Newfoundlanders, to get behind this industry and start to work towards it so that we can be a have province and our kids are not living with the burden of what it is that we've created for them. And that's something I'm really excited about. Big Newfoundlander, big fan, as I often called myself, the fighting Newfoundlander, looking after this place, trying to find opportunity. And I really think this is this is one of those days where you, you just, as they say, seize the day and take advantage of it. If we don't, it'll be another opportunity lost. And Lord knows we've seen enough of those over the years. Yeah. I, I'd like to leave those in our rearview mirror. Jerry, your thoughts? Well, you know what? There's something we often do on our longer podcasts, and we ask someone to give a little bit of advice. Andrew, you know, you have an enormous business acumen to you. What advice would you give to a young person? We're really interested in youth, understanding the opportunity. What advice would you give to that young person out there watching this? Um, never sell yourself short. It, it, it's not necessarily, it's not only about intelligence or, or things. That, what it is for me is it's tenacity. It's resilience. It's work ethic. It's effort. And if you can put that into anything, you'll make something work and do that. And I think Newfoundland, as an economy or as a province is a testament to that. Nothing has ever come easy to this province. As I alluded to earlier, look where we are. We're in the middle of the North Atlantic. The weather is certainly not favorable. I look back to the days of Sprung Greenhouse. Boy, did we make a mistake. There was a lot of other places in the world um, that we probably could have done a lot better with something like that than here in Newfoundland. But focus on what it is that we do have. You know, we've got a hardworking uh, population. We've got ones that are used to adversity and overcoming adversity. Um, we've got tremendous opportunity in the natural resources and stuff, but don't give up. This is a great place to live. It's a great place to raise children. And I think if they're tenacious and look at it optimistically as opposed to pessimistically, and I've always been a guy with the glass overflowing, I mean, life is worth living, you know. Right. Whoever gave me this opportunity to be on the green side of the side, God love them. But it's, it's a ton of fun to be here. It's a ton of fun to do this and see the enthusiasm. It's a ton of fun to know that the generation coming behind us have all this opportunity in front of them. And I hope they take advantage of it. I hope we as Newfoundlanders yeah. don't throw a wet blanket on these opportunities for our own self-serving reasons. I hope we look at it as a, as a province, as an opportunity, as a future generation. It's not for who we are as individuals today. You know what, Al? I used to play ice hockey with this man when he was a teenager. You've grown into one heck of a fine young man. I, it's a pleasure to talk to you. I don't know about young, but I tell you, I'm having it as I said. I'm a lot older than you. Andrew, thanks very much for joining the podcast. Another wonderful conversation here on Gale Force Winds. And thank you to Everwind Fuels for bringing the conversation to the trade show floor. We've never had a glass of beer on one of our podcasts before, but I would encourage anybody to give Burnside a try. Looks like a wonderful glass of beer. Uh, thanks very much. I've heard a lot about you over the years, and you certainly don't disappoint. Well, thanks very much, Alan. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me, and enjoy the show. I think there's lots of opportunity, lots of people to talk to. We'll say hi to Rob Green. Mutual Absolutely. friend of all three of us. Absolutely. Sounds great. Thanks, guys.